Your Excellency, Mr. Colin Vixen Kelapile, President of the Economic and Social Council. Your Excellency, Mr. Sareya Sindavongse, Vice President of the Economic and Social Council and Chair of the Coordination Segment, and fellow panelists. Thank you for inviting me to speak at the ECOSOC Coordination Segment panel on protecting the planet. The health impacts of the triple planetary crisis, the crisis of climate change, the crisis of biodiversity loss, and the crisis of pollution and waste are obvious. Climate change is causing droughts, floods and heat waves. Nature and biodiversity loss are degrading ecosystem services vital to human health, such as fresh water, healthy food and medicines. Plastic particles full of harmful chemicals are swirling in our oceans. Climate change, pollution and unsustainable consumption are driving spillover of diseases that jump from animals to humans, disease transmissions and the risk of antimicrobial resistance. And air pollution is killing millions each year. It's just obvious that if we act on the triple planetary crisis, we bring immediate benefits to human health. We know what we need to do from decarbonizing to backing solutions that work with nature. But today I want to focus on the One Health approach. This approach which views human, animal and planetary environmental health as one and the same is gaining traction. Important new bodies are forming, such as the One Health High Level Expert Panel and the Global Leaders Group on AMR. We must use this political momentum to promote integrated multi-sector and multi-stakeholder initiatives. Under such initiatives, we can build and implement actions that have coordinated surveillance and early warning systems on zoonotic diseases, on antimicrobial resistance and on other emerging health threats. Actions that improve science for more coordinated interventions. Actions that create incentives to improve sustainable farming practices, sustainable trade in domestic and wild animals. Actions that ensure strong global stewardship of nature and biodiversity. And on this point, we must ensure we get the post-2020 global biodiversity framework right. UNEP is working with our friends at the World Health Organization, the Food and Agricultural Organization and the World Organization for Animal Health or OIE and others to look on how we can bring environmental data into existing surveillance and early warning for risk assessment processes with the health sector. These efforts are matched with joint capacity building and training so that public health professionals, veterinarians and environmental practitioners can understand better and develop coordinated multi-sector responses that truly address the problems. These are the kind of solutions that will advance multiple sustainable development goals at the same time and that I hope will expand as UNEP works with WHO, FAO and OIE through the alliance that has up till now been called the Tripartite Alliance on One Health, but which we hope will soon be the Quadripartite Alliance. To succeed, however, we need strong financial support for One Health. Over $220 million in financing was committed to One Health activities in 13 countries in 2020. Yet, investments in One Health required to prevent future pandemics are estimated to be around $3.4 billion per year. Now, this might seem like a lot of money, but let's contrast this for a moment with the COVID-19 pandemic investments, which would cost the global economy probably more than $18 trillion counting till today and we are still counting. The triple planetary crisis is a grave public health issue, one that will cost not just lives, but huge amounts of financing to governments and businesses. Investing in a One Health approach as part of efforts to return to living in harmony with nature is undoubtedly a very smart move.